Capitalism, socialism, communism. What's the difference between these three things? Today, we will discuss that here on Mr. Drosty History. Now, this is a topic that is very confusing for students and adults alike. Of course, here in the United States, we claim to be lovers of capitalism. But did you know there has never in the history of the world been a 100% capitalist society? At the same time, look at the Cold War era, the dreaded communists in the Soviet Union. Did you know there has never been a fully communist country in the history of the world? So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to talk about what it means to be communist, what it means to be socialist, and what it means to be capitalist. Now let's just look at these one by one and discuss some of the hallmarks of all three of these systems. All right, so as you can see on the list right here, some of the characteristics of capitalism. Just to keep this simple, of course, there are many, many other things you could say as well, but going through some of the basics of capitalism. Okay, number one, capitalism has privately owned property. This means that you own your home. You own your possessions in your home, right? Speaking of owning things, privately owned means of production. The people own their own businesses. They decide what to produce, how to produce it, when to produce it, how much to produce, and so on. So the private ownership of property, the private ownership of businesses, those are hallmarks of capitalist societies. Along those lines, capitalism has the free market. Okay, what is the free market? The free market is the idea that there is no government interference and that your business can thrive or your business can fall flat on its face. Boom or bust, right? And here in the United States, there's lots of examples of businesses that started from almost nothing, that stored, started out of dorm rooms, and these businesses went on to become multi-billion dollar businesses. But there's way more examples of people who tried to start businesses and those businesses fell flat on their face and they busted. But that's capitalism, boom or bust. But notice I mentioned no government interference. In a true capitalist society, there is absolutely no government interference. There's no government oversight. And this is why there has never been a fully capitalist country in the history of the modern world. Here in the United States, of course, we do have government interference. Some government interference is absolutely necessary. All you need to go to is to look at the history of the Industrial Revolution. Look at the old you know, state of the factories here in the United States. Look at child labor. Look at when there was zero wage regulation, when there was no minimum wage, when there was no benefits. Okay, That didn't work out so well. So you have to have some government interference. You need to have a watchdog. You need to have protections for your employees. Now, people can argue about how much interference, but some interference is absolutely necessary. So that's, not, that's why we are not a fully capitalist country and never have been. All right, let's move on and let's talk about what is socialism. So socialism is kind of a boogeyman word here in the United States and elsewhere. Right, There are some things about socialism that no doubt can be negatives, can be bad, but there are some things about socialism that can be good. And there is socialism in the United States, and there has been for decades and decades. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so number one, in true socialism, you have state-owned property. Okay, the government itself controls property. Also, in true socialism, you would have state-owned means of production. That means the government is controlling the factories and what to produce and how to produce and so on. Okay, Another hallmark of socialism is the redistribution of income. More on that in a second. Now, I would, I would also say that socialism is much different than communism in that in socialism, you still have democratic elections. So because of that, it's more flexible than communism. You can get the government to change course if things are not going in the way that you want it to go. That is not the case in communism. More on that in a second. 
So people tend to confuse communism and socialism. And one of the reasons for that is because, as Karl Marx wrote about in the Communist Manifesto with his co-author, one of the steps to communism is socialism. That countries would go through socialism to get to communism. With that being said, when you look at this list of some of the characteristics of socialism, some of these things we have in the United States, like point three, some of these we don't. All right, and this is the case for pretty much every westernized successful democracy. They have some aspect of socialism. Let's look at the redistribution of income, also kind of a buzzword that gets people hot sometimes. Well, There is redistribution of income in the United States, as is there in Canada and in all over in Western Europe and so on. So examples would be here in the United States, Social Security. Pay a Social Security tax, and that money goes from you to the current beneficiaries in Social Security. It's not a savings account. doesn't go to your Social Security benefit someday. You are funding the current beneficiaries of Social Security. All right, so that makes it a redistribution of wealth. There's other examples of socialism, public schools funded by the taxpayers, right? Not necessarily by people that even have children in school. They're still paying for the public schools through their taxes, you know, through the property tax and so on. So that's an example of socialism. Another big example of socialism in the United States, agriculture subsidies. Farmers get lots of government money paid for from taxes, That's a redistribution of income. Uh, You could also look at firefighters, police officers, even the U.S. military. Okay, all examples of redistribution of income. All of this, very popular. So you can have some level of redistribution of income. That's socialism. That's part of the United States. And it's popular. Now, there's other ways you could do it that maybe wouldn't be so popular. We're not going to get into all of that. But the big idea is that the United States is a mixed economy. We have some aspects of capitalism. We have some aspects of socialism. So we would say the United States is a mixed economy, as are many democracies around the world. So then what is communism? What did the Soviet Union aspire to? Okay, Uh, other examples. Vietnam, China, uh, Cuba, North Korea, and so on. Well, as I said before, that there's never been a 100% capitalist society in the history of the world. There has also never been a 100% communist country. Not even the Soviet Union reached true communism. All right, so let's look at this list. The goal of communism is a community-owned property situation. The community itself owns the property. The community owns the means of production the factories. So this is why there has never been a fully communist society in the history of the world because as Marx wrote about, the step to communism is first the state owning property, the state owning the means of production, and eventually the state is supposed to turn that over to the community. Well, what actually happens in communist societies or societies aspiring to communism like the Soviet Union, the old Soviet Union, is that the people at the top get greedy and they never turn over the property or the means of production to the local communities. So what happens is they get wealthy, they have power, and everyone else is held down. So we've never reached the point in communism or in a country aspiring to communism where you got to community-owned property, community-owned means of production. In communism, it is supposed to be moneyless, classless, and stateless. So you really wouldn't even need a government in the end. The community controls everything. And, you know, you go back to the 1930s. Great Depression is striking all over the world. Or you go to the post-World War II period. And you can understand why, for some people, this appealed to them. You know, they look at a situation where their country has been destroyed by war. Or their economy is destroyed. They look at this promise that we can have a situation where we don't need money. You know, we don't have to pay for housing. We don't have to find a job. That's all going to be provided by the community. And they think that that sounds good. But then again, as I just explained, we never get to that point. So there's never been a true full-on communist country because they they don't reach that end point because of corruption and because of greed. So in the countries that we say 
are communist in history, like the USSR, okay, like North Korea, like Vietnam and China and so on, really what we get is we kind of get stuck in a certain level of socialism that is aspiring to communism because we'll have a situation where the government is providing or not providing food, housing, the necessities, and the government is controlling the means of production. It's a command economy. That's what we would call it, when the government commands the means of production. And what you end up having is an authoritarian leader, you know, like a, like a Joseph Stalin, like Mao, at the top, and they control everything. But as written in the Communist Manifesto, the roots of communism come from there being a violent uprising by the workers, right? So the working class, the proletariat, overthrow the heads of the businesses, the bourgeoisie, and they instigate this communist revolution, and this is what they aspire to, a moneyless, classless, stateless situation. That's the goal. It has never happened in the history of the world. So again, the Soviet Union... It was a country where that's you know most associated with communism. They get stuck between socialism and communism, but they never reach the full-on communist state. Just like on the other side, the United States and the rest of Europe and Canada were mixed economies. We're kind of between capitalism and socialism, but we're a democracy. On the other side, they're kind of between socialism and communism, and they're authoritarian-controlled, mixed economies. But they, in general, that is the basis of what is capitalism, what is socialism, what is communism. So socialism and communism are not the same thing. Socialism can be a step towards communism or it cannot be. You can use some aspects of socialism which are popular and you can stay away from the other things. So hopefully that helped you out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and we'll see you next time.